if you go where the hippies are, they will let you be what you want to be. I don't know. I'm the first general, not the last, who tried to get the war to be fought with dogs instead of people. I say it's different now than it was a few days ago. It's different now than it was a few minutes ago. I say it's different now. It's changed somehow. It's different now, and I'm changing too. A carousel, dreams thrown down a wishing well. You're looking fine, you're holding only air. Today may burst, you want to understand it first. And then you turn around, and it's not even there. Oh, it's different now than it was a few years ago. I say it's different now than it was a few days ago. than it was a few minutes ago It's different now It's changed somehow It's just acid. The hippie seems to be growing. Acid. It's been brewing. Yeah, it's been brewing, but acid kicked it off. Of course, it's a whole different way of life. It's a whole different way of living. But more than that, it's a whole different way of thinking. I think this is probably why so many of the civilians have no concept. They look at the uniform, which is oftentimes bizarre, but it's fun. It's fun to be bizarre. I tell you the reason why the health department is, uh, is down on the hippies today because they are the people talking, the people of San Francisco are talking about hippies. They said they live, a hippie is, uh, is classified as, as a tramp or a hobo or a bum or something. Because man doesn't shave, he grow long hair, wear dirty clothes and things. He live in cluster pads. And if you live in pads, I, I've slept in the same pads myself. The hippie movement is probably the, uh, the best thing that ever happened to this country. As soon as a person says, I'm a hippie, he's not a hippie. Yeah, but uh, you don't say, I want to become a hippie. It, which is legitimate. That I see truth in this in this movement or whatever you want to call it. I see truth. I see life in it. And I and I think that anything that is truth will eventually uh, overcome. You know, a hippie is a teeny popper. A hippie is a kid who gets his slang from, I don't know what the radio station out here. In New York, it's WMCA and Murray the K, you know? For two years, they've been, they've been listening to rock groups, first out of England, and then out of, out of California and New York City, who've been drug-associated, who are former jazz musicians, who are very much in a bohemian and avant-garde scene, and, they, and suddenly it's hip to talk drugs. A year ago, I walked in a subway station in New York, and I saw a sign advertising one of the radio stations and one of the disc jockeys, and it said, Joe O'Brien turns people on. Groovy. They, they picked it up. They get it in newspapers. 
right? All the newspapers have labeled these people hippies. Somehow, somehow the word came out, and the newspapers weren't being friendly. It was a derogatory word. Everybody knew it was a derogatory word, except the fucking 15-year-old who wanted to dress up and find an answer to the fact that he couldn't get along with his parents. So he runs away to hate Ashbury, and he proudly proclaims that now he's no longer, he is no longer a neurotic juvenile. He is now a hippie. But you know something? He's still a neurotic juvenile. You gotta stand up and speak out. My God, that's what I've been saying. Everybody in our history has said it. Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Does the middle class people in this country, the white middle class, are they free? Don't kid me, they're not free. They're so hung up in this mess that they've generated that they're sick half the time. They have ulcers, they hate the life they lead, and they can't stand it. And you're going to tell me what should they do? Be a human being, that's all. We're gonna have about 200,000 people in Haight-Ashbury. And Ashbury is an area of about, well, eight blocks, maybe ten blocks, a little more if you consider the fringe areas. That's, that's I guess, about uh, one person for every five or six square feet. I think they have more space in China. We have tried to have digger homes, digger houses. We've opened some. We've had to close them down. Uh, right now, in Hunter's Point, 75 or 80 buildings, vacant. The city won't let them happen. We're trying to get housing. We've gone to the churches who say, of course, that uh, they can come on Sunday. Sunday, they can have a place to sit out of the rain. Uh, <laughs> evenings, they have no place to sleep. We're going to try to open up a place. We're looking for a house. Of course, we realize by only four or five hundred, we'll probably get busted by the, for a health violation. But that's all right. It's happened before. We're used to it. Um, what's going to happen? There are going to be a lot of penniless kids on the street. But they're not going to be responsible. They're not going to be mature. They're not going to be people with ideas. And they're not going to be creative artists. They're going to be kids looking for kicks. And, uh, frankly, if we don't get any help from the city, I don't want to be around. Because I don't want to see it, except I'll be. I'm stupid. I like, <laughs> you know, I'm too stupid to pull out. I'll be sticking around and trying to do something about it. I know. Um, I'll tell you one thing. To me, the diggers represent what is good in Haight Ashbury. But the responsible, the creative, those who are more than speed freaks. Those who are more than teeny poppers. And everybody's done the only, there's only one thing that underlies that I've come across that every digger I've talked to agrees with, and that's that the world owes everybody a living. We've got this survival school here where the new kids coming to Hate Street can really find out where it's at. Sex, drugs, VD, how to avoid getting busted for drugs, how to avoid gang bangs and pregnancy. How to exist without bread? We give out six months of experience in three days. What we've learned the hard way, we pass on to the new kids for free. The kids come in, 90% of them, they flop in a digger pad. There's will be one open again soon. I haven't yet learned that there's a difference between freedom and license. If there's any, if there's any, any belief in guiding bigger person relations. It's that you do your thing, you act in your interest, you act, you act as you see fit, provided you're not interfering with someone else, provided you're not imposing on someone else. These kids forget it. They forget it when they walk down the streets and harass, harass, you know, straight people walking along. And they're amazed they're amazed when they walk in to the office and someone with, with long hair and a beard calls them dumb hippie and insults them. They don't understand. Don't they? How can I insult them? Haven't they got beads on? 
Yeah. Would you like to take a walk with me through homes in the Haight-Ashbury area and see all these people that are brilliantly exploring their inner consciences? Sally is interested in another man or woman for her pleasure. Do you approve of that? I'm going to make... I'm going to make a condition to your marriage. If at any time during your marriage, one or the other party wants a divorce, you will say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and your marriage will be null and void. Do you agree to that? Yes. Will you put your right hand into Alan's right hand? Hold hand by the authority and the belief granted in me by yourselves. I now pronounce you man and wife. Do you like Carl to be your husband? I do. Carl, would you like Diane to be your wife? You know it, baby. At any time, Carl should have any problem or difficulty, or if he should have any kind of bad luck, would you remain his wife and love and cherish him through all, all of his time? Yes. Carl, no matter whether Diane is good or bad during your marriage, will you love and cherish her? Yeah. Carl, if Diane showed any interest in another man or woman, would you continue to love her throughout your marriage by the authority granted in me by yourself? I now pronounce you man and wife. Look, I'm sorry we got married legally. I wish we hadn't done. Uh, I wish we didn't have the stigma of a legal contract overhead where we know it would be completely voluntary all the time because love binds together, not legal contracts. And too many people are together because of legal contracts. You know, and everyone, yeah, just think, if everyone had the freedom to know that they could walk out and you know, it wouldn't be a big legal court hassle, you know, how many people would really stay where they are? 
to have to wear a ring or um, so people will say, oh, you know, they're, ma they're married. It's like saying, you know, hey, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction that, uh, of putting us in a type or putting us in a, a slot of uh, we're married and that's it. It's like a name, you're married. And it means something to them, but boy, it means something quite different to us. They look at like they're having these lovings now and stuff. Oh, well, a lot of them just don't realize that all these lovings are is a big picnic. And that people long ago have had these things, you know, a long time ago. They, they've got nothing new. The people that are called the people of the hippie movement are fine people. They're misunderstood people, misunderstood uh, particularly by police authority. There's, there's just no communication between these people. But I think to go back to this point again about the, the only problem really is a lack of communication between the, no the, the normal community and the hippie community. Well, it, look, it looks harmless for the most part, really, except for some of the, you know, some of the blaze looks. You begin to yeah. wonder, because you yeah, hear about that's this. that's a private thing, you know. Is it? Well, I, is I, it? I, yeah, you, well, you hear all this stuff about LSD and the whole bit, you know, and you, and you wonder, you know, how many of these guys actually are, how many of them are just, you know, just making with it, how many of them are really true hippies? I mean, according to this literature... Uh, this is a great place for exhibition, it's really. Uh, they released a lot of interventions up here that they normally wouldn't do. We've seen a few that I know. You could, you could almost bet that they never get out of the house. Yeah, get them on the street. Something They're like real, the, real uh, inhibited and everything. But boy, get them out here and they just go for sure. Well, well, I wonder. I, I, That's what I think. I you wonder how many, of, how many of them are really, really, really. Well, hippies. And I don't know, and I don't imagine most of them know, really. I think it's a place to come to get together to ex to release some inner tension, possibly. I don't know what else it would be, really. There are a few that probably uh, are uh, protesting more, some things like this. I imagine that, that goes with it. Peace and love and things like this, basically, I mean, they're... They're great. They're great. They really are. But well, wars are necessary, let's face it. Somebody told me some person told me something about they wanted to have no morals at all, or something, which is utterly ridiculous. I think that's really what the hippies are trying to do. They are rebellious. Well, I'm telling you, baby, it's easy for people who are on top to say, well, just leave me be. I want to stay after they've got their pockets full out of other people's backs. And the people on the bottom who they had this taken out of them, like the Vietnamese peasants. Or Let somebody else live off the sweat of their backs while their children start. And that's exactly where a large portion of the material wealth of this country was generated out of the backs of people around the world who suffered and sweated and starved and died to build this beautiful thing that we call the United States. So fat when we have troubles reducing. Because the only people that made anything out of the poverty program were middle class white American. They ran the bureaucracy, making it in some cases twice or three times what they were supposed to according to their own rules. You know? The whole thing is so ridiculous. The kids are saying and I'm saying and many people, the blacks and are saying, the hell with it, now! My own mind, you cannot have a fragmenting, a, what's the word, conflict bearing economic system, which capitalism is. You cannot continue with capitalism. All the complexities of modern society that's overburdening everybody are unnecessary, and that's what the kids, and that's what we're all saying. Now, baby, because this whole scheme that you have here that you think you're so tied up in, if you just turn your back and walk away, people would make the new country work. Who's going to handle the paperwork? There will be no paperwork, and that's, that's what makes it all so easy. That's you're eliminating money, you're eliminating paperwork, you don't need insurance. But I hope that the police will not be suspicious of everyone with long hair or everyone who wears bells or beads or boots or funny clothes. Uh, too often I hear officers express the attitude that the people who are a part of the hippie movement are homosexuals, are communists. Uh, this represents just a gross misunderstanding. to be 
the rest, uh, it does help to have long hair. That, that singles you out right away. But all you have to, to be is in the wrong place at the wrong time. I saw two policemen here beat up a young kid in front of my establishment uh, for allegedly blowing them a kiss. Long hair to the police is something obnoxious. To the people in the hippie movement, it's an expression that they are individuals and that they are going to be individuals. This is something that very often the police authority and the rest of the establishment find very difficult to understand. I would hope that the future is going to bring a great deal more understanding and more communication. I would hope that when the police want information about the hippie movement, that instead of going to other observers, to sociologists, to psychologists, they will go to the people in the movement and talk to these people and understand these people. Thank you.